I'm visiting an inn in Massachusetts that's been run by a dysfunctional couple. I love you so much, but you suck as a business partner. He's lost. I have no idea what I'm doing here. And she's lost it. <sighs> Just wanted to keep it together tonight. And with the staff suffering as well, What's the worst thing she's ever done to you? Smack me on the back of the head. I'm not even sure if I can get through to them. The whole operation is screwed. What do you think we should do? Close. Have a nice day. Nestled in the heart of scenic New England lies the small industrial town of Southbridge, Massachusetts. It's home to the Vienna Inn and Restaurant, Husband and wife, Jonathan and Lisa Kroc, have owned and operated the inn since buying the property back in the year 2000. Jonathan had this crazy idea of creating the Vienna as an Austrian restaurant and bed and breakfast. She said, have you been drinking? Said, no, not yet. <laughs> we try to transport people and to give them that feeling of being in Vienna without having to fly there. When people come in and they stay here for the first time, they think that Jonathan and Lisa are a very gracious host, charming, the perfect married couple. But if you dig a little bit deeper and you stay a little bit longer, find out it's quite a different story. Lisa is an emotional person. She does get upset often. She will just, you know, explode and she can't help but be upset. She's over the top. My beautiful wife, my boss, sometimes she's not so nice to me. Why do you always have to dress like a goddamn, like, bum? There has been a time where I called her a psycho bitch, because she was being a psycho bitch. Clean up, man. Yeah? I'm done with this. I don't feel like Lisa is authentic. When she's crying, I don't feel like she ever means it. <laughs> Jonathan and Lisa live in a room at the end. You can hear them screaming at each other, and you can hear it in the dining room, so there's no boundaries. They'll come down after the shift at the end of the night and they'll have cigars, have some drinks. The environment can quickly become unprofessional. She'll go up to a table and ask them about like their sex lives. You are good looking. We don't get that many locals at the Vienna. There's like a lot of things that people think in town about the Vienna and I think it's become a little taboo. You have uh, those rumors going around and people say, oh, the Vienna, they're all swingers. It's a big brothel. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That being said, we're very friendly people. Very friendly. People from the outside think that Vienna's doing very well and we're very prosperous, but somewhere in there, we're losing. They're dragging us down with them, and if they want us to help them, they, they need to help us. The Vienna is our home, has been for 13 plus years and, you know, it's hanging by a thread. And this 5.30 at table five. You're walking right in. We want to be ready for it. Look at this place. My God. What happened to him? He didn't last very long, did he? He found our cat. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Dead cat and a cabbage. Isn't that funny? Good morning. Hello, welcome. Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. Gordon, first name is? Melissa. Melissa. Good morning. How are you? How are you? Lisa Crock. Lisa, nice to see you. You Hi. don't look very happy. I do. Um, I, uh, oh, it's this it's, it's my resting face. Wow. Um, yes, welcome to the Vienna. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I'm to the cat. <laughs> Poor thing. Cat got run over. Oh, I see. And you got it stuffed? For Halloween. Right. Actually, better to see you now. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, love the attire, by the way. Thank you. Everyone wears this. Wow. How much are the outfits? About $300, $400. Three hundred dollars. Average, you know. They get their own. I mean, they're their own dresses, you know. Oh, you buy your own uniforms? Yes, yes. they do. Stop it. We do. Well, they have them for many years, and it reminds them to not gain here. weight. <laughs> wow. So, who designed the place? Well, uh, my husband and I. And whose idea was it to buy it? Uh, my husband. So it wasn't yours. It was not my idea. Actually, very much against it. Wow. 
Uh, uh, why were you against it? It was very overwhelming. I had two small children, but probably uh, after I lost my mind the first year, I think we started to get a hang of it. And who's Austrian? Are you from? My husband's half Austrian oh, and Polish. Right. I, I'm not nearly as exotic. I'm very no. American. Right. And he's the chef, right? So he runs the restaurant kitchen and you run the inn? Correct. And whose idea was the uh, violins on the table? Mine. Where did that come from? That was actually from an estate sale down the street. A dead man's violin? No, yeah. Not me, no. Why not? I don't want to sit across the table with my wife and look at a dead man's violin. Well. A bit freaky, no? I don't know. What would you rather look at when you see the Vienna? Her. Who's her? Uh, my wife. Oh, your wife, yes. Yeah. But you have to have something in, to make up that white space. What would you suggest? Uh, my wife. <laughs> You're going to put her on the table? That's kind of scandalous. I am so fucking confused. Dead man's <laughs> violin. What about some flowers? Bloody hell, is this place always as clustered as this? And who's that there? A Prussian family, of course. That was uh, Friedrich, that uh, their family all was murdered. Uh, murdered? So hungry, yes. Wow, so dead man's violin, mm -hmm. uh, murder on the wall. Um, great story to uh, encourage a nice, warm, welcoming dinner. So, um, why don't I check in upstairs? You can do that right now. Yes, like. please. Yeah, why okay. not? Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Wow. Interesting indeed. Just a clutter. Your bedroom's over here. Rocking chair? Where's that from? That's actually the first no. piece I ever refinished. Wow. So you're quite an antique hoarder. Room service. Yes. Oh, room service. Come in. Holy Come in. mackerel. Now, what we have here is some pulled boar. Shredded. Oh, oh. Shredded. Yes. Right. And then you have a little celery root right on top. Wow. And what's that? A little parsley. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, <laughs> take one. Would you like me to have one? Yeah, of course. There's three, three pieces. Okay. Excellent. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, you're welcome. Oh, hold on, wait, wait. Let me put a little bit of the garnish on there. You want me to have that? Well, yeah, we'll have a little piece each. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 Uh, what did you think of that, by the way? Celery root, really don't like it. The pulled boar, maybe just a bit more salt. Wow, and what did you think of that? I think it's a nice little surprise for people when they come in to uh, mm. liven up their appetite. Boar was very watery. It was mm -hmm. very watery, I did And the that. bread was soggy, soaking wet. Soggy. Mm. From the celery root. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Enjoy your stay. Please pass on my uh, comments to the chef. I definitely will. There we go. Oh dear. Okay. Wow. And who designed these bedrooms? I designed everything. You designed? Mm -hmm. I wallpapered wow. it as well. Uh, seriously? What's this? That's a, another closet. What do you mean another closet? I don't have a closet in my bedroom. That's a closet that we have because there's an area but, over here for guests to use. But where am I going to hang my clothes? Right over here. Oh. You don't need an entire closet. So if you need clothes out of your closet, you I come in my bedroom. Ahead. Do you have the key on you? I do. Can I see inside? I'm just a bit freaked with locked doors in my bedroom. Gosh. Really? Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. It's right here. Oh, it's there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> just my closet. Holy crap. Stop yeah. it. Stop it. Seriously? All my stuff. It's like a garage sale in a closet. That's why we keep a lock on it. Well, I've got no interest in wearing any of the garments, but thank you. You sure? I, I'm, I'm positive, 100% uh, okay. positive. <laughs> Bloody hell. What's the price of this room? This one is 220 $220. dollars Correct. Yeah. And I have to share my wardrobe with the owner. But what's through this room here? Well, that actually goes to my bedroom. So do you just walk in when you need to get some clothes? From here? No, but from um, your bedroom to my bedroom. Well, I only do that once or twice a week. And what's this? Wow. It's a, an antique purse that was actually found in the house, and we thought it was really neat to uh, be able to have. As it's, for, that's a toothbrush holder in case you decide to take it along with you. That's a toothbrush holder? Or you could stick tampons in there if you really wanted to. <laughs> we do that. usually have those. Oh, they're not in there right now. There that's you go. an old lady's case. Mm-hmm. Just trying to think of clever ideas to make this feel like a historic inn. 
historic. Mm. It's definitely historic. Oh. Bloody hell, how old is that? You need that? Uh, no, it's just fascinating <laughs> to see what's in my basket. Thank you for that. Oh dear. Everything looks dated. I mean, first impressions, it looks very, very tired. What is all that? That's like somebody wants to throw roses right. on the bed. Oh, for God's sake. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> and then they go back in the drawer. I guess Once so. you've used them. OK, well, I'll uh, look forward to seeing you downstairs. I'll have lunch. Super. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Jesus. That's freaky. The owner's bedroom is literally a metre away. The place is so dated. What a mess. Fuck. Everything's just cluttered. What a mess. Look at this. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, seriously. Bloody hell. Packed with shit everywhere. More decorations. Right, right here. Have a Thank seat. Thank you. You can uh, sit wherever you one? prefer. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get some food out. Want to get some food out? Yeah. What's in here? <laughs> no. Jesus. Lisa, there's junk everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Everywhere. Is the whole house packed like this? Of course it is. Why? It's crazy. Have you always been this bad? It's a new thing I'm coming at terms with. Right. <laughs> it's just a... But you do have a problem I, with it. Actually, no. I, I, I think I've actually gotten rid of a lot of things you in the past couple years. Don't have a problem with everything I've just seen in the last 10 minutes. Wow. Oh, well. Here you go. Right, right. let's... Well. Uh, oh, geez. Um, do you know how to say all these? How do you pronounce that? Sufgart. <laughs> um, You've been here a long time. You must right. know the lingo. Sufgart A lot of people must point to what they want to order, right? Yes. Or just pick up the last line. How do you pronounce that? Uh, Koningsberger Klops. Wow. And how long has this uh, menu been running like this? Uh, since the beginning. Oh, 13 years ago. Yes. Stop. Yes. Seriously. Yes. Uh, let's start off with... Go for the scallops. Okay. Let's do the beer batter, the sauerkraut. Yeah, let's go for that. Um, and Absolutely. throw the um, vegetarian mushroom ravioli in as well. Wonderful. Okay, great. I'll keep hold of the menu for now. Okay. Thank you. Sear it in first. Whoa. Yeah. Almost lost it. Regroup. Regroup. Where is Missy? I'll bring it right That's up. Mr. Ramsey's first. Red pepper beurre blanc. Yes, sir. Our seared diver scallops with a red pepper beurre blanc. Wow. Thank you. And scallops are normally round, right? Yes, they are. We have beautiful sea scallops. I'm not sure why they cut it up today. No, nor am I. Oh, well. Excellent. OK. Thank you job. very much. Looks like the dogs chewed them. I mean, seriously. That's rancid. What's up with that one? Excuse me? Would you like me to give me any comments back to the chef? Comments? Yeah, those shit. Thank you. Yeah. Terrible. We'll have Val take care of it for you. Who's Val? Me. I like the way you talk about yourself in the third person. Seared diver scallops. Um, Tastes like shit. Tastes like shit, really? Wow, OK. Any specific kind of shit, or just... No. Diarrhea. No shit? Oh. These here are the sauerkraut and baktig. And are these uh, edible flowers or not? They are. Chrysanthemum seeds. They are. Mm -hmm. OK, great. Thank you. All right. Hmm. Dear, oh dear. They are terrible. I mean, the food is so dated, it's extraordinary. They look like a pair of camel's bollocks. Hmm. This I have here is the mushroom cream. Delicious. Taro and cream. Wow. I mean, what a fucking mess. Hmm. There she is. Fucking hell. Val. Val. Yes. Delicious. I mean, you're kidding me. No, no, I'm fucking delicious. Seriously, really good. Seriously? Now the flowers I'm all about. Ah, you had me going there for a whole second. I thought it was all about the food. I, I... Maybe next course. Jonathan, the flowers are absolutely delicious. The flowers? And this menu doesn't change every decade. It's the same menu that's been on for 13 years. Jonathan doesn't change much. Editions. Oh, sorry, I asked you a question. Lisa always answers. Go on, you... you... Jonathan doesn't change much. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you, you answer Melissa's question first, then I'll go back to Melissa. You said this doesn't change but once a decade, and I said Jonathan doesn't change much. Right. 
Um, you've been here a long time. You've seen the place uh, in decline. Um, what's the big issues here? A little disorganization. Um, things unclear. Yeah. Uh, Nothing consistent. Yeah. And, you know, one puts the other on edge and we get the brunt end of it. Lisa's listening to every word you're saying. I, I can barely hear you. No, no, I was just talking to Mr. OK, I'm sorry, I'll leave. No, no, do whatever you need to do. Um, what's the worst thing she's ever done to you? Uh, smack me on the back of the head and in front of the customers. Seriously? In front of the customers? Not hard, but still uh, demeaning. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah. Damn. So there was under-seasoned? Over-seasoned? Under-seasoned. Really? Which? Everything. Wow, um, where's Lisa? I will grab her for you right away, Mr. Gordon. And grab Jonathan too as well, will you please? I will, Gordon. Yeah. And anyone else in the kitchen, please? Okay. Excuse me, Lisa, Jonathan. Yes. Can we meet up in front with Gordon? That's the most edible thing in here. Uh, right. Ooh, la. Um, first impressions. I look outside. Historic in. Unfortunately, you've misspelt that. It's prehistoric. Everything's so dated. I go up to the room and the room's shoddy. Jonathan, do you not think it's a bit weird that A, my door's open adjacent to your bedroom, but your wife's clothes are in my closet? I never thought of it that way, but I guess that is It's weird. That was shocking. You just served me one of the worst lunches I've ever eaten. And it was that bad I started eating the edible flowers. You can't be proud of what you've just served me no, and charged absolutely me. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're correct. You clearly have given up. It tastes like it, and it feels like it. What do you think we should do? Close, because your heart's not in it. And I think your head's just in with the clouds. Embarrassing. Pretty fucking awful. It sucked. Caught me off guard completely. I mean, you knew he was coming. I did. Really embarrassing. I really thought we tried harder. And... I let you down. I'm sorry. You did let me down. I'm really sorry. I always try to tell you that we need to change things, we need to make them sexier, and you never want to listen to me. <laughs> I've always wanted to change, and you always say I'm too random, and it's not. I'm not random. I'm trying to show you ideas and things that we can do differently. <laughs> <laughs> Socks. He couldn't have cooked worse than he did. Can you pull my ankle? It hurts so much. I'm never gonna be able to walk tonight. Oh, God. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. We'll figure something out. He doesn't fucking listen to me, does he? Oh, I feel so good. I'm not really that upset. I'm just crying because I want to right now. I've heard rumors around town that the basement is known as a swingers hangout and is used for late night parties. So before dinner service, I want to take a look at what's downstairs. Wow, look at this. My God. Some really expensive stuff. This is crazy. I can't believe how much stock there is here. It's like they're spending the money in all the wrong places. Look at that, this place goes on and on. Oh my God. Please shout before entering the mineral spa. Mineral spa. Oh my god. This is like a dungeon. Dungeon for swingers. Tonight is crucial because I need to get my eyes on how Jonathan and Lisa are running the hotel, since both of them seem to be on different pages. Can I uh, get you beverages to start with? We're getting some wine. Okay. I was, I was thinking Cosmos, but wine is great. <laughs> There's so much stuff in here. I've never seen a kitchen so cluttered. It's been worse, believe it or not. How come the food just sits there? Right at the moment, our timing is really not at all good. What are these for, Jonathan? Those are little pre-meals, little crackers, little piece of cheese. Pre-meals. I'll give that to you to get rid of, please. 
uh, to get rid of. The AI trash. Oh. Uh, you can't serve that on yeah. that's a paper for customers to eat. You can't ask them to dip into a fucking doily with a cracker and then a flowering and mmm, and yum, 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 yum. It's just, no, it's a bit fucked up, do you know what I mean? It's not your place, but it's just a bit weird. You okay? Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm okay. When were the chickens roasted? Two days ago. That's the last of them. Why do we roast them two days in advance? They're delivered twice a week. They're cooked off the delivery day. What kind of impression do you think you're sending out to your customers when that chicken's roasted two days before they come? I, 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 I... When do you think this chicken was roasted? You oh, my it. goodness, I hope it was today. It was roasted two and a half days ago. I am not happy to hear that at all. That was going to be dry as a dog's bone. Yeah. But anyway, uh, try to enjoy. OK, thank you so much. I don't feel well anymore. Thank you, I was dry. <laughs> They've been coming for 12 years. You need to just seriously just focus on getting this night done. And they sit there all schmuck. I want to kick them out right now. Do you want us to take the food back? I mean, this is, like, so disappointing that you guys feel this way. I thought we were friends, and I, I thought you would have maybe told us if you felt the food sucked that much. You know, it's really, gosh, I feel, well, I feel like I want to pass out right now. Fucking hell. Um, so the lady you were just talking to over there had no idea her chicken was roasted two and a half days ago. It was roasted two and a half days ago? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, okay, fine. I mean, it's no. not my business with him no, in the I'm kitchen. No, I'm just, I'm just, God, you two are so defensive. There's a thousand different ways to make spets. I've got nothing to do with that. I'm talking about the chicken. You know, I mean, I'd, I'd love to find out the problem. Chicken, way. I'm talking to you about the chicken. Well, we Making an excuse again. Nothing, nothing resonates with you, does it? Nothing. It does, certainly honey, does. It Absolutely, does. it all does. What in the hell? I just wanted to keep it together tonight. That's all. <laughs> uh, crazy. Are you like manic or something? I'm manic. Yes, I am right now. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Uh, something between shitty and awful. What does it mean when you feel like an elephant sitting in your chest? Oh, you don't have a heart. You can't have a heart attack. Are you hungry, Gordon? What is this? That is bacon. Should be on a different shelf. And this here? That shouldn't be thrown there either. What's that? Beer batter for the beer batter shrimp. Should be thrown out. And this one? Let me just stand that on top. Sure, put it right on top. What is all this? That was bacon. No, no, no. Well, mean, that's okay. No, why is it in your fridge like this? I dropped it one shelf below. Instead of putting where it belonged, I put it on the corner. Normally, these things are pretty orderly. This is a complete clusterfuck. And what's that? Corned beef. Let's, let's, get, let's get outside. Sure. Lisa, let's get outside. What is going on? The whole operation is screwed. The kitchen, shocking. The line, disaster. Cross-contaminated. Raw meat, cooked different, meat. Different foods, absolutely. Shit everywhere. And then the biggest asset, where all the money is, is downstairs in the wine cellar. Who's maintaining standards here? He is. I cannot believe what you've just done in there. I really enjoy it. You can't enjoy I that. I swear to God, I do. That's... I, I must be, like, cuckoo in the head or well, something. Well, you need help. Maybe. He does. You need to wake up. I think we can do this. I know we can do this. Yeah, but not just you and you. No. I want it to be you and I, because you so don't listen to me most of the time. Like when I tell you, yeah. it's time to come home, Jonathan. It's yeah. time to fucking come to bed. And you just say, fuck you. No, you know, fuck you now. Fuck you, Jonathan. Oh, yeah. I love you so much, and you're such a great guy, but you suck as a business partner. You really suck. Thanks. Do you want to recreate this? Do you want to? Get clean, divorced. Clean. I don't want to get divorced. Do you want to get divorced? Tomorrow? No, I don't want to get divorced. Why has it always been your way? I guess I've asked Because you for know more I, than I, me. I, apparently, I don't. I'm as stupid as you think I am, if not worse. <sighs> Thank God. Let's go in the back door. <sighs> Fucking me. OK, give me a drink. I couldn't get this down fast enough. That looks pretty good. All right. Have a nice night. <laughs> it's 
gonna be okay. Thanks for being on the other side. We appreciate it. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> that bourbon was really strong. <coughs> Crap. Crying again. No, it's not really crying. It's just releasing. Release it. Lisa, can I have you and him together, please? Sure. I'm unconvinced, and I've never met a couple so undeserving of my time. And I think you, Lisa, you're just faking it. I'm just trying to... No, you... Trying just... to get through the night tonight. No, you're acting. The crocodile tears are there. Next minute is a laugh. It's self-preservation, and it's the only way for me to get through the day. There's no heart. There's no feeling. There's a lot of heart. No, there's not. I, I love what I do. No. And what do you love? Drinking with your friends? I don't do much drinking. I'm not the party girl. He's the party boy. So there's no parties way on after service downstairs in the basement with the customers? Not in the past, like, 10 years. Jonathan, you've lost interest. I'm a mess. Yeah, you are. So the first thing I want you both to do is to pack a bag. I want you to get out of here. Start packing. After sending Lisa and Jonathan away for the night, I'm hoping they can start to realize the effects they are having on the Vienna. But before they return, I called a staff meeting. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I can get a better understanding of the damage that Lisa and Jonathan are doing. Um, I didn't get a chance to meet you yesterday, yesterday. I'm Jamie. Do the housekeeping here. OK, great. Let's get one thing right. I'm here to help. Having done my research, I mean, the one positive feedback I've had it's about how good the staff are, because I know, you know, just how bad things are, and having witnessed that service last night, uh, I'm appalled. Is it always like that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Screaming? Yes. yes. People can hear them yes. in the dining room. I've had tables that have asked um, if everything was OK in the kitchen. We can't be expected to be professional all the time when they're not professional. After our shift, they'll, they'll sit down with the table and expect us to Wait on them, hand them drinks until midnight. If we leave, they get upset. So guests stay here, and they're drinking downstairs in front of those guests, sometimes with the guests. Yeah. See, there's no separation between business right. yeah, and personal. When you're sitting here entertaining your table, she'll find something wrong that you're doing, and she'll come and point it out and at you right you in front, in front, of, front of, of your table. table. She's just rude. She texts me sometimes really rude text messages like, oh, you forgot this, or you forgot that, or why didn't you do this, and why wasn't this done? This is crazy. Another problem that we've really have been having is we don't have an actual payroll system. There's no payroll system. And then he'll say, yeah, I'll get you one. And he just never... Ask him for your salary. We have yes, to ask for Yes, we have to ask for a chance. Yeah, I got, I got 20 bucks right now. That's all I got right now. Here. Yep. Tomorrow morning, I'll see you. They're drip-feeding your salaries. My bank does not take the checks. Neither does mine. When was the last time you had a staff meeting and discussed this? Never. Never. No. Uh, I'm sorry, but I want to put an end to all this. Here's what we're going to do. Um, they're arriving any minute now. And my message to them is if they're not prepared to bring in a level of professionalism and understand those boundaries need to be met on a daily basis, they're going to lose the in and they're going to lose you. Let me go and get them. I let myself continue to be abused. They need to know that it has to change and it can't just be brushed off anymore. Uh, I had a chat with the team. They're not in a good place and you've abused them. There are no boundaries. They're your staff, and they need to be treated a certain way. Let's go to Jamie first. I'm really concerned about the abusive texts you send him. Why would you send him an abusive text? It's like, text? oh, you would send me a picture, like, oh, you forgot this, or you didn't do this right, you or this. You told me that you worked at a lot of other places and you knew how to clean. I, and I, when you, the toilets aren't cleaned and stuff, it's really important. But some of that stuff doesn't work. So it's like I'm sitting there scrubbing and nothing's coming up. And you'll be like, well, go do it again. And it's like, I'm trying, I'm trying to do what I can. None of these talented individuals get paid on time. I want to know why they don't get paid on time. Because I don't have a payroll system in place right now. Well, that's a fucking disgrace. That is disgusting. And then you want them waiting on you up until all hours of the early morning while they tidy up after your crap, and then you can't even be bothered to pay them on time. It's a, it's a mess. No, 
You are a mess. I need to say something, though, that almost every single person here, we've given them loans. You're lending them money to buy uniforms to work in your goddamn business. Right? That's absurd. Why? Why? Absurd to pay for a uniform? The business should be providing the uniform. Well, maybe we need to do that. Yes, you do. I never do. thought about it that way. Whose business is this? I've tried to create here a place where people can come and, and, and relax and escape yes. from their stressful lives. Escape from their stressful lives yeah. to hear you and Lisa scream at each other. Are you fucking kidding me? We don't always scream at each other, but what when I, we do, I'm... That's what maybe I... The smallest place is. You live here, so you've got no idea how many times you do it. The love, affection and respect that they've shown you is extraordinary. And the sad news is, you both don't deserve it. I'm sorry. I will change. I just hope you, you guys want to continue. I just want to say thank you for your honesty, uh, loyalty. Uh, there's some other important people I want to introduce you to this morning. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so, Lisa and Jonathan, uh, I've asked uh, some ex-customers, uh, locals, to come and give you some feedback. Has anybody stayed there recently? We did. The room we stayed in, it had tools and screws and instruction manuals. Wow. So it's not just For the air conditioners me. and stuff, yeah. That's right, you're but, right. Madam, give us an insight to your experience, please. I do have to say, my husband ordered uh, scallops and they were raw. We returned them. The decor was very outdated and it feels very cluttered. You feel like you're locked in a closet it's just overwhelming when you're trying to have a nice dinner. I would never come back there if things don't change. Okay. What do you guys think about the uniforms? It's a bit the much. The poor ladies were kind of revealing. Our oh server oh was the nicest person, mm -hmm. but I think it takes a lot away from them. Oh, it doesn't need to be in your yes. face. The reputation locally is crucial. What have you guys heard? I've heard that's a swingers hangout. I heard that as well. When I had mentioned the Vienna, they said that's where the swingers go. You eat downstairs and then you go upstairs, is what I was told. But you've heard this before. I've, we've, I've, we've, I've heard heard for, we've heard it We've heard it for 13 years. Yeah. But is this due to your late night drinking and the party? I don't think so. Fact or not, that's how yeah, it's, it's just, you know, that's, you're, you're living there. Portrayed. But yeah. what I'm trying to say is that there are no boundaries. It's an oasis down there that has got a jacuzzi, a massage table. And if the word has gotten out around town, and then you're People being... misunderstood that room, and that's where it all started. I'm just saying it's either a business or it's your home. There's no, there's no crossover. The mixed messages you're sending yeah. is your own fault, because mm -hmm. you haven't been clear. I used to come to the restaurant probably every month or so. And I can tell oh, you have a lot of like passion for your heritage, but it's not in the food anymore. If Gordon can help you take your heritage and the food and modernize it, and you can progress with that, I'll come every Friday. Mark my words, it's a promise. Do you have anything to say, both of you, to these guests? Thank, thank, you. thank you so much for your honesty and input, and uh, really, really appreciate it. We're going to be making some big changes to uh, address many of the things you talked about. The staff have been incredibly loyal. They haven't been treated the way they should have been treated. I'm undecided about these two, but I am committed to that team because I see what is at stake and the jeopardy they face going forward. Now, I've got some, something else important to sort out. After leaving Jonathan and Lisa, I moved forward with my plans to help renovate the inn. I brought in sommelier Dave Foss to create a beverage program. If you just have a look in here, I mean... That wine's fantastic. ...from the excessive infantry they weren't using. Oh, three. Oh, that's delicious. My team worked up to the last minute, transforming the many spaces at the Vienna. Wow. Oh, wow. That is amazing. Holy smokes. 
This is beautiful. This is incredible. Bravo. The Vienna had no organization for managing their day-to-day -day operations. So I gave them the state-of-the-art system to help with all their hotel operational needs. Welcome to the Web Res Pro system. And this will help transform your business. It will link up to the POS system and it will give you data like you've never had before. Fabulous. You need to be organized from the infantry to the wage costs, to the salaries, to the POS systems, to the checking in and the checking out system. And the good news, guests can now book online. So this should relieve a huge headache. I could see that everyone was thrilled with the changes at the Vienna. Good. Have a good look round. But as I watched Lisa... Where's this stuff from? I noticed she was dissatisfied with the renovations. These are different chairs from the other ones, aren't they? No? I was just seeing if it was 100% cotton. It was. Is that a pullout? No, it doesn't need to be a pullout. And right now, I'm worried where Lisa's head is going into relaunch this evening. I can help you with your bags, but first let's get you checked in. While it was time to relaunch the inn and restaurant... A little more modern, if you Yep. We have an order. I provided the staff with brand new uniforms that go with the new updated menu that includes wine pairing and beer flights. First is going to be the grapefruit, then the second is going to be the pilsner. Lisa, are up here. Please get out of here, Lisa. Off the line. Actually, let's turn this lamp on. No light bulb. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse What's me, Amy. Uh, no light bulb in there. I just wanted to turn Don't the light on. Don't worry about it. Okay. What, who's complaining about the light bulb? Oh, just making sure that they have enough look, light. Look, look. I was trying to turn it on and realized it later. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Let's focus on the big things. Are you always like this over little details like that? I like to have things feel right, and so <laughs> I'm feeling extra, like an extra need to make sure everything's right. That's all. OTT. Just a fusser. OTT. Probably, whatever that means. Over the top. Huh? Over the top. Oh, I guess I don't have to be so over the top now, do I? You do not. Yes. Jesus. What is wrong with her tonight? Do you think she's going to go back to her old ways when I leave? She might accidentally. Customer's coming. Welcome. While Lisa is nitpicking everything unnecessarily, the appetizer for table five. Oh, sorry. We didn't give you that yet? No, you no, didn't. Table five sausage. No? No. Jonathan oh, fuck. is lost in the kitchen and service is starting to suffer. What table number is this, please? That is yeah. table number 11. They're waiting on two flank steaks with it. Oh, where's the flank steak? Are they coming? Uh, moments. Moments, okay. uh, minutes. Who's cooking the flank steak? Come on, guys. We can do one four top at the same time, yes? Yes. I designed the menu around the size of the kitchen and the speed of both you working together. Yep. OK? <laughs> Come back for the flank. What the hell is this? Look at me, both yes. of you. Both of you. Cut the shit, OK? Look at me. You're yeah. more capable of doing four fucking main courses at the same time, especially when there's two of you. And one of those main courses is the same dish. We've got to talk to each other, but I'm not going to start sending one dish at a time from four top. Serious? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Jonathan, but look Thanks. at me, hey, yes. look at me. I need some fucking effort from you a little bit. I need a little bit of respect and a little bit of effort from you, OK? Yeah, yeah? and look at me. You're yeah. the man holding this fucking thing together. You got it. And if you go down, the whole fucking place is going to go down. So I need you to step up, OK? I need you to talk a little bit, and I want four main courses at the same fucking time. Oh, and Jonathan, yes. you can get your mind set round four main courses at the same fucking time. Understand, we're serving one table at a time, and we're going to complete that table. Yes. Four main courses, three main courses, five main courses, we're going to talk together. Yes. Sausage goes with what, the two soups? What's yes. coming next? It's going to be uh, sausage, two carrot soups, and a fried cheese. Good. For table seven. OK, so we're talking now. Yep. Good. Carrot. Thank you very much. We have your flank steaks. Your wine is coming right away, OK? Your sausage. You guys are all sharing, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think the new Vienna will definitely attract a younger crowd. Oh my god. So beautiful. I'm super excited about the new changes, and I hope they'll last. I, do, I really do. Uh, right. We've had ups and downs, but tonight is a prime example of how good and how profitable this business can be. Customers loving the food. They love the decor. I'm leaving with all the tools. 
to get this place back Rock to where you wanted to go. I do want to ask you one thing. Sure. Is there anything that's happened this week that you're not happy with? Yes, I had expected the Blumen's room to be done, not the Koenig, but I was, it was the room I didn't expect. It, at... And the room that we've done is amazing. This week. Still has problems. Can I just tell you something really important? This is not a makeover show. I know that. Yeah. But you're complaining about... I, I wasn't saying I didn't love that room. I've... It'd be a great shame for you to sound ungrateful. Oh, I'm not ungrateful. I am just no, so from shocked. Definitely don't want the to new just... management system you. to Dave. Uh, you've got no I'm idea what's going I'm coming across wrong if you think that I'm uh, being ungrateful, because I'm really uh, not. Um, I, I it really... sounds like that. No, not at all. I can't come in and wave a magic wand and transform 15 bedrooms and put a brand new kitchen. You now know what needs to happen. I do. But I need to tell you something that you're not going to like. I arranged for a new stove. You did? To come. And then when I got the engineer to come and survey the place, yeah. uh, unfortunately, he had to leave. Yeah. Because he was going to shut the place down. Because there's practices that are taking place in there that aren't appropriate. You're saying the gas get, systems? Or the, the whole setup yeah. underneath there. Nothing's been changed in 13 years. Yeah. And it's on the verge of running no. legally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Listen, I came here to help, but you need to help yourselves and you Absolutely. need to dig deep and stick together. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Thank you, Gordon. Okay. Good night. Thank you. I'll feed his Safe traveling. Man, that's hard work. Soon after I left, Lisa and Jonathan reverted to the old Vienna. This is something that belongs here. Good that came with the house. What are you doing? You're insane. By changing the decor and bringing back the original menu. It's worse than it was. It looks horrible. They chose not to take my advice about running the inn properly. You'll listen to me about what should be going on in the kitchen. And as a result, their reputation in town remains the same. Tonight, I check into a New Mexico hotel where the guests are driven away by the owner, who thinks you share. I'm like an audio mirage. If I do a share tune, you're going to think you're hearing share. I've got to find a way to save a sinking hotel with dreadful entertainment. I would pay you a hundred bucks not to sink. Awful food. It's like the cat shell over my plate. And a general manager who can't be trusted. Does the general manager bad mouth the owner behind her back? Yes. What an untrustworthy, backstabbing son of a bitch you are. The 14-bedroom Maison de Messia is a small boutique hotel located in the border town of Las Cruces, New Mexico. It should be a wonderful southwestern oasis, but the few guests that visit the hotel are in for an unpleasant surprise. Owner Kali Shavinsky purchased the former bed and breakfast in 2006 and completely remodeled it, putting her own distinctive taste and style into every aspect, from the food to the furnishings. To me, it's very European. It's very Tuscan in nature. Maybe that's the Venetian plaster, but I didn't really pick a style as much as I just picked out things that I liked. And one thing Kelly likes a lot is beige. The bedrooms are beige, with beige, and a little beige. The walls are freaky. It looks okay, like it's that's... trying to be marble, but it's plastic. I do not believe the customer is always right. Definitely not a place that I would feel comfortable staying. Sometimes they're wrong. I don't care that cook well. Mm -hmm. She's pregnant, she wanted to make sure it was well. You know, the more you cook it, the less flavor it will have. How's that chicken parm tender salad going? Callie made the menu. We only serve Tuscan food. I don't even know if Callie's ever been to Italy. 86 bruschetta. Told you guys forever that was an awful recipe. But it may not be the bad food or the decor that's keeping guests away. My mother was a bartender, and she would have me sing to people, and they paid attention to me, and they liked me. I live for applause. Kelly tried to make it as a professional singer, but when her career stalled, she found her own personal concert venue. I bought the hotel to sing. 
The audience members really like me a lot. I'm like an, an audio mirage. You, if, if I do a share tune, you're going to think you're hearing share. If you're not looking at me, you think I am share. We get a lot of telephone calls. It's Callie singing tonight. Well, then that kind of means they like me. Too proud to tell you I was wrong. I think I surprise them quite a bit because they just don't expect it. Give me just a second here. After that song, I need a little drink. Two months ago, Kelly hired local restaurateur, Zan Steinberg, as her new general manager. Ladies, how are we? Who's, check, who's checking in? Zan's wife, Mitzi, has been working with Kelly since the hotel opened. In the beginning, my husband Zan and Kelly's relationship was very good. Has it deteriorated? Oh, punch. Where are the keys? How can I get anything done if that bastard won't put shit back? Zan is the biggest problem here right now, and that's unfortunate because I brought him on to help me with what I thought the biggest problem was, was we don't have enough customers. Some kind of general manager he is. Callie should be fired for being a poor operator and digging this thing into a hole. With ownership and management not on the same page, the guests are the ones that suffer. How is everything here? We're basically ready to get our food to go because we waited so long. Okay. Let me take care of this. Yeah. Callie believes that the customers have a place in her hotel, but Callie's at the tippy top of that pyramid. I do not enjoy going up to tables and having something wrong at every fucking table I go to. I don't like it at all. Hotel bookings have fallen to an all-time low, and for much of the year, not one of the 14 bedrooms has a guest in. If things don't change fast, the hotel will be forced to close. Someone needs to be able to tell me what it is I'm doing wrong. It's everything that I have is tied up into the hotel. I need Gordon's help badly. My first time in New Mexico, I'm in Las Cruces in the Southwest Desert. And look at it. I mean, absolutely stunning. On the way to the Maison de Messia. Now, this is a small boutique hotel, possibly the perfect getaway. You have arrived at your destination. You're kidding me. I mean, this is a joke. You've arrived. I'm not, yeah, I'm going to fucking pile of sand. Turn around when possible. This is crazy. It doesn't make sense. You have arrived at your destination. Is that it there? Turn around Turn when around. possible. You'd think they have a decent sign on there, wouldn't you? It's like a prison. Finally. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Maison de Messia. Good to see you. So whose favorite color is beige? Well, Callie was the decorator. Callie is the... Callie is the owner. The owner, right. This is our cleaning agreement. If you could read and sign it, please. Cleaning agreement? Yes, just so oh, you don't... I'm not coming for a job or a detox or... Just so you don't or... damage our property. This is a... Damage your property? Yes. The owner is no, very I'm concerned Scotland. about the Venetian plaster. The owner is very concerned about the... Venetian plaster. And she wants me to sign a waiver. Yes, sir. To say that I won't damage it. Yes, sir. Does everyone have to sign these? Everyone, yes. Why would I sign a waiver? I'm not sure why you'd want to sign a waiver. No, sir. I'm not going to sign that. By the way, welcome. Good to see you. What a first impression. I don't believe that there needs to be a waiver. I just do what I'm told. You put all these things on there. It doesn't look like New Mexico to me. It sure doesn't. Maybe Italian? Uh, well, I have two Russians in Italy, and my Russians haven't got pictures of New Mexico. Bloody hell. Let's go up to the room. Do I have to sign a waiver to walk on the carpet? No, sir. Look, that was not me. Looks like someone pooped on my wall. No, you got a little fireplace. A fireplace. That's exactly what you need in the middle of a fucking desert. Do you have any alternate rooms? I'd love to move if it was less beige. All the rooms are going to be the same. Oh, shit. Well, thank you. I'm going to pack. Are you going to leave me alone on my own in my room? Do I need to sign a waiver? No, sir. No. Nice to meet you, by the way. Nice to meet you too, Gordon. Thank you. This room is so bland, it looks more like an airport hotel than a fun weekend getaway in the heart of New Mexico. I can't wait to meet the woman behind this. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the sun. Gordon. And Callie. Callie, good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, I thought that you'd be wearing beige with the lady that's in love with beige everywhere. I do like beige. My favorite color is beige, but I think beige goes with a lot of things. I didn't sign the waiver. Sending that message out to every customer coming in here is not a good sign to begin with. Well, it's $7.50 a square foot to replace the Venetian plaster, so it right. can be a lot if someone does some damage. Why don't you uh, show me around? I would love to show yeah. you around. 
This is the main dining room. How many seats do you got here? 89. Um, what do you have, a stairs? It's a stage where I perform. Oh, wow, amazing. Yeah. And percussionist, guitarist? No, I actually, right now, I sing to tracks. So you have, like, a backing track? And I you do. sing over yes. it? Yes, yes, I do. OK. Wow, wow, wow. And this is the bar. This is the bar. Over there, we have another yeah. stage. And I usually sing in here on Fridays and Saturdays. Okay. And who else performs here? No one else. No. Wow, wow, wow. And then through here? Seriously? What's all that shit in the pool? Well, that's from the pool cleaner who was supposed to be here this morning. It's a little bit late. Is it busy, the pool? No, it's not. Very seldom do people use really? the pool. Mind you, I suppose it's like going for a swim in the prison. Jesus Christ. What's on the back there? That was for entertainment. Oh my God, three stages. I sing everywhere in the hotel. I love to sing, period. Three stages? I hope there's no stage in the kitchen. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, to Sierra. Sierra Angel. Sarah, nice, nice to, to see you. you. Likewise, where are you from? I'm from New Mexico. Oh, We're nice. Yeah, Local girl. Mm -hmm, I am. Excellent. Is the cuisine uh, New Mexican? No. There's, some... there's nothing here that's New Mexican at all, no. This is all very... Uh, Confusing. I'm looking forward to tasting the food later. Anyway, whatever Wonderful. it is. Uh, let's catch up with the bar, shall we? Nice okay. to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I like to cook Southwestern cuisine. Like, I don't know why we have Tuscan food. As the owner, in your mind, what's wrong with the place? Well, we don't have enough customers. And you've had it now since... 2006. How much did it cost? $1.2 million. Wow. And that's what I purchased it for. How much did you spend converting it? Another 1.2. Mm. Two and a half million. Bloody hell. I shut down for 14 months to remodel it. 14 months shutdown. That's yeah, incredible. it wasn't supposed to be 14 months. It was supposed to be four. It turned it into 14 months and a million two to do it. And the contractor was indicted. Bloody hell. I've gone through a lot of stuff with this hotel. It's like, I'm starting to think maybe the problem is I'm just too trusting. How long can you continue putting money in? <sighs> I've got maybe 60, 70, $70,000 left. So for the next six months, max. Yeah, unless unless we unless it kicks up. Um, listen, I'm uh, I'm here to help, and I'm sorry it's been this difficult. Thank you. I'm glad to see. I'm I'm really glad you're here. I've just arrived at Maison de Messia, and I'm confused by this hotel. Who put all these things on there? It doesn't look like New Mexico to me. It sure doesn't. I met Cali, the owner, and she told me she's desperate for this place to succeed. I'm really glad you're here. So, I'm keen to meet the general manager and see why he's letting this place fail on his watch. Now you're the general manager. I'm the general manager. Um, how long have you been working in hotels? Hotels would be nine weeks. Listen, I'd never been in a hotel, but I'd always been in restaurants, full-service restaurants. Stop. How does a restaurant manager become qualified to be a general manager of a hotel when you've never worked in a hotel before? It's not that complicated. Take care of the guests, check It's not that in. complicated. I don't believe it is. I can do the work. It's not that hard. There's only like six, seven things I need to learn. What are the major problems? The major problem is Callie is the owner. She's the major problem. The major problem. She is too controlling, and my hands are being tied. If you're not being allowed to do the job you came in to do, why are you here? I'm here because I'm emotionally invested in the place. How the fuck can you be emotionally my... invested when you've only been here nine, nine weeks? weeks? Well, my wife's been here all these years. Anytime somebody calls in sick, the first person they call is Mitzi. We've always thought it's a gold mine. We just can't figure out why we can't get people in the seats. The only way for Masson to be successful is for Callie to back out. What are these things here? Uh, the vinyl. We're uh... disgusting. In fact, can we take this off? Do you mind? Instantly, that looks better, right? You do not need to be a general manager to make that decision, do you? No. Is there a server or? I'm going to bring a server over here. Please. Right and his or her name? Uh, Mitzi. Mitzi. Oh, it's your wife? Yes. How are you? Good, how are you? Let's order first, shall we? OK. And then we'll have a chat. All right. Well, what would you like? We are in New Mexico, aren't we? Yeah. Yes, we are in Las Vegas. And I Taste of Tuscany. Yes. Why wouldn't you just go for a modern, stunning, delicious Mexican cuisine? I guess it's because she thinks there's enough of them. It's crazy. Uh, the prosciutto looks good. OK. okay. The chicken piccata, that sounds interesting. OK. The lamb lollipops. Wow, well, it's not cheap, is it? $23 mm -hmm. for the lamb lollipops. Thank you, my darling. Uh -huh. Bloody hell. I got the prosciutto. I know good food. Thank you so much. No problem. Our food is really good. To be forewarned. It's hard to catch that all over my plate. The prosciutto normally goes with uh, tomatoes. Yes, Looks and like this big. is olives and anchovies. Popular dish? Um, no. It's like vomit, that I guess. Right? Whew. Dear, oh dear. Word got out that I'm in town, and the restaurant is starting to fill up with customers. Can I try this one, please? I feel sorry for all of them. Wow. Here we go, my $23 lollipops. 
been the longest member of staff here. What do you think is wrong with this place? Um, I think Kelly's reputation. Is it that bad? She's rude. She's rude? Mm hmm She's brass. She's short. She's not flexible. I think you get the picture. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. Uh -huh. Blimey. Not what I'd call a loyal workforce. Raw flat. $23. Dreadful. Tough as fuck. Do you like lamb? I love lamb. It's tough as anything. a little tough and perhaps a little rare. A little tough. What is going on? No, you haven't got much hotel experience, but isn't this your forte? Rations? Yes. Bloody hell. I'm finished with that. Thank you. I mean, dreadful. Absolutely. You can tell it. Is that lamb frozen? The lamb comes frozen, and we thaw, of course. Can you find out uh, where it's from? Yes. Psst. Lamb lollipops. No go. So far, nothing I've tasted has even a remote connection to the area. Nothing local, nothing authentic, nothing New Mexican. New Zealand. New Zealand lamb. Mm -hmm. Wow. That part's right. That part's right. Okay. Our chicken is um, piccata is non-traditional. Thank you for visiting us here at Masande Masia. My name is Callie. I'm going to do just a little music for you this afternoon. A little rock number from Cher. Love her. Sure, what's more scary, the food or the singing? What would you say? I don't know, they complement each other. Come on, ladies. Attacked by a fake bunch of graves. <laughs> and thanks for joining us here. Is that normal? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's not just because I'm here. No. She is not Cher. I am sorry. I, I love this thing. That's probably why I bought this place. I've got to get away from this horrendous singing. We haven't met yet, have we? Say again, sir? We haven't met yet, have we? No, sir, I'm David. David, what'd you do? Yes, sir, I'm a pantry. Pantry? Yes, sir. Tell us. Are you trained, David? Well, it's trained a little bit, sir. I've been around, sir. And where's your love of food coming from? Where, where do you... Where My do father. You, your father. Dad's a chef? No, sir, my dad was a nurse, but he loved to eat. Wow. Walking in another calamari with the rim you like. I have the second calamari selling right now, ma'am. Heard. Could just two seconds? Yes, it's, sir. it's already breaded. Oh, and yes, fried. Sir. I'm gonna fry it right now, sir. That's already cooked. Yes, sir. So when was it cooked? Oh, actually we get it in a box, sir. We get it from a fish company, sir. Completely frozen. Just touch that? Oh yes, sir. It feels like rubber. I, I don't eat the fish here, sir. How come you know this and you're still doing it? My opinion doesn't matter in this restaurant. Because you know it's bad. Yes. And yet you just, against your will, do it. <laughs> Life. <laughs> wow. I hope tonight's guest can remain as positive as David has. If you can sign this here for me, it's just a cleaning agreement. A what? A cleaning agreement? Just in case you do throw red wine on our walls. Does that happen? It has happened, actually. Unfortunately, the guests checking in are getting the same terrible welcome that I did. If I could please have you read. Good evening, ladies. Welcome. Nice to see you both. Thank Hi. you. I'd like to apologize about the waiver. All right, well, you, you got to do... Ooh. Oh, oh. No throwing red wine on the walls looks True. Sign but. a cleaning agreement? Yeah. So what does that mean? Like, do the checkoff list when you come in, and then do the checkoff list when you exit in the exactly. morning? Is there any other breakfast other than coffee in the morning? No, ma'am, there's no breakfast. Is there room service or anything? No, ma'am. You're lucky you're not hearing the singing. I'm going to head to the bar for a quiet afternoon drink. Any more singing, and I feel like my head might explode. Okay, what is going on? Customers are having dinner, and all of a sudden she breaks into this music. Totally unexpected. Oh, totally. Yeah, she just sits there and absolutely wails away. Wasn't it? Yeah. Um, what the fuck? Seriously, I've seen enough for one day. Just, you're gonna have to lay that down somewhere. Where's she going now? She's just gonna sing. No, yes. not, not in, in here. here. Yes, sir. You're kidding me. I thought these guests in here were the lucky ones. <laughs> I did, too. The same numbers? Exact same. She's a nut the job. Exact same board, yes. My name is Callie, for those of you who don't know. I do a little entertaining here. Got any Cher fans in the audience? Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, thank you. With dinner service and the terrible karaoke concert finally over, it's time to get the chef and the management together and find out what on earth is going on here. Let's get one thing absolute certain. It is not a taste of Tuscany. It's not funny. It's a clusterfuck. So are you are you are you proud of this? No, I so told you doing it. Because I'm not allowed to change anything. Oh my god. I feel like there is many pricing issues here. There are definitely changes that have to happen. You're amazing. It's just total horseshit. It's just total horseshit. You know? It's you just are like you lying? No, we work within the constraints and I'm allowed to work. Oh, me, constraints this should all my been ass. Talk. This should have been all Constraints talk. my yeah, ass. Much. You have done nothing since you came in here but talk about me behind my back, try to set me up to fail every fucking day. Why and do I want to make you look I better? don't know. Well, I know. wish the hell I did know, but I've got several people we can line up and we'll tell them exactly what you said and to I, them. I imagine we will, you know. Then I can hear the no... same thing about you, Bullshit. you know. I'll leave, and the only thing you'll say, the parting words, not to me, is I hope he hangs himself. Now, how horrible is that when I'm doing an event here? Well, I'll tell you how horrible it is. About as horrible as when somebody hires all new people and tells each and every one of them that she's a bitch to work for, you can't work with her, but hang in there because in six months, I'll be running this place and she'll be gone. I mean, literally, right out of the box. Right out of the box. So there you go. You so have that's what no... it all goes back to. Yeah, because that's when I found out what an untrustworthy, backstabbing son of a bitch you are. I gotta worry about my back continuously with you. What? This major miracle man that was supposed to come in here and double and triple this business when there's been no change whatsoever. None. So was I allowed but to that, make any changes? Or like direct, dramatically you, well, you make any to, changes? You wanted to hire new people, which you did. Of course, you told each and every one of them that they shouldn't work for me. Oh, for God's sake. Is that true? There was the impression given that Callie would no longer be here whenever oh we were brought she over. She owns yes. the place. Why were you suggesting that she's not going to be here after Sierra starts? I don't recall that. <laughs> Poor shit. Wow. It just wasn't right. her. She all, it wasn't right. her. It was you, Annie. It you was Kristen. Really, it was you, everybody. Oh, my God. Does the general manager badmouth the owner behind her back? Yes. Of course she doesn't trust you if you're going to badmouth her behind your back. If you were the owner, what would you do? I would fire that person that badmouthed me. You're fired. I think I'm leaving. I, I, I was just fired. Now, Callie, I'm sorry. You've already failed. And you need a fall guy. OK, you got me. You run it. You step up to the plate. Good luck. I'm leaving, too. I'm out of here. I feel betrayed. And if the bitch thinks I'm going to stay, she's nuts. You know, I don't mind Callie yelling at me. It's fine. She finally got it off her fucking chest. But she doesn't trust anybody. You know, everybody's burned her in her history. I don't know. I didn't burn her. It felt good to fire him because it's been a cancer here at the hotel. And now the tumor's been cut out and we're gonna be in better shape. Zan's just been fired and the level of animosity and the friction between those two is extraordinary. But the question is, what happens next? I had a rough night's sleep with that bloody share tune going round and round my head. I'm hoping I can wash that tune out of my brain with a quick swim. And that's not all I'd like to forget. My first day at Maison was crazy. Within hours of my arrival, the general manager was fired. What an untrustworthy, backstabbing son of a bitch you are. And I had to endure torture by Kalioki. I really didn't mean to hurt you. Today has got to be better than yesterday. Let's hope the pool guy came. The pool is still dirty. What the hell is that? What a joke. I mean, what a badly utilized space. I mean, you think of a hotel anywhere in New Mexico. God, one thing is an asset. There's this pool. I mean, this space could be the best thing about this hotel, yet it's just abused. Dirty, not even a towel out here, so. Who the fuck would swim in there? That's disgusting. So, no morning swim for me, but at least I can enjoy a good breakfast to start the day. God, that's all they've got to offer. How depressing is that? This is crazy. I've got to find some breakfast. I'm starving, and cold coffee isn't going to do it. But I've heard there's an amazing farmer's market in town, so I'm going to quickly check it out. What a lovely little place. 
I've heard David from Maison's Kitchen runs a food truck here in his spare time. No deep fried calamari, I hope. I saw the line, I thought, uh -huh. wow. What are you serving? We got quesadillas, best in New Mexico. Okay, brilliant. I have a little, little food truck with a buddy of mine, Chris. A little taste of New Mexico. This is one of our favorites right here, the cucumber lime. That's perfect. Little mint. But 100 degrees outside, that's perfect, right? Yes. Uh, my goodness. Man, that's delicious. So what's in the case there? Cheese, yeah. green chili, and acidero cheese. Here you are, my friend. Thank you. Mmm. That is delicious. Yeah. Now, David, that's better than anything I've eaten in the hotel. You know that. Is there? Uh, delicious. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, the food truck is my creative outlet. It's a place for me to at least express my ideas without having any borders. Well done. I'll see you later. Thank and you, good sir. job. Thank and you, delicious. Nice, Enjoy the food, guys. Thank you. This town is stunning, full of charm and local colour. It's such a shame the hotel reflects none of that. I've got to find a way to get Callie to embrace New Mexico and make the most of what her hotel has to offer. How are you feeling? I feel okay. I think it's important for you to understand the bigger picture. Okay. Yeah, keep coming with me, please. Thank you. Hopefully, what I have planned will open Callie's eyes. Kelly, this is some of your guests. I'd like you to share your experiences. Why don't we start off with you first, please? First impressions are, are important to me, and, and the, the very first thing I had to do was sign a, a cleaning waiver, and it, it just it makes the assumption that I'm not going to be clean. That assumption was it was just a tough first impression. Yes, a valid point. Waivers are for bungee jumps. At your peril. Um, the whole thing for me wasn't to make you think that I didn't think that you were clean. It was. I had someone come in and throw red wine all over the Venetian plaster, and I thought that I should charge them for that. But you're punishing every other guest well, on the back I of the sins of one guest, and it's not right. You know, you can't penalize future business on the back of one idiot. So, it appears that there's no thought into what the customer's going to experience. For instance, um, the first thing on a hot day, you want to go into the pool. Um, and we looked out to the pool, and, and, it, and it's right now it's the same way. It's got um, a lot of leaves and it's dirty, so it, maybe it's not open, but how can it not be open? Yes, a valid point. Madam, please. We were in the lounge for dinner, and when you were singing, we couldn't have a conversation. It's just not appropriate for an upscale, intimate, fine dining experience. And I feel like you're very focused on the performance, but you're not really focused on your guests. Very interesting. So. Anything that goes wrong with the restaurant when you're singing, you're too busy singing and not caring about your guests. I would pay you a hundred bucks not to sing. As long as you are focused on your singing career and not on your restaurant and hotel career, my wife and I won't be back. I don't agree. I have quite a bit of people that come here to hear me sing. Guest feedback is critical. It's about turning that negativity into something positive. Now, I'd like to introduce you to a very special lady, Nilu Matamid. She is the features director and the senior correspondent for Travel and Leisure magazine. Nilu, um, give us a little insight to your stay, please. One of the things that we look at is whether a hotel has a sense of place, whether it's maximizing the value that that beautiful setting that it's in has. You mentioned the pool. That's one great example of a moment where you have a potential great asset here that is being underutilized, and it's kind of underwhelming. There's a reason why hotel schools exist. So it's not a hobby, it's a business. There is one question I'd like to ask you all. Would you come back to stay in this hotel again? Please raise your hands. No one. Um, thank you to you all. Your feedback has been absolutely pivotal. I appreciate it. I was sending a message that I didn't realize I was sending and didn't want to send. I want people to come here. I want them to feel welcomed. Are you starting to understand? I am. You are? I am. You're worrying about the wrong things. The biggest issue you have is understanding who's number one. The guests have to be number one, not Kelly. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. If you can change that, this place has every chance of becoming a big success. Can you change? Will you help me? I, I will help you, but you've got to start listening. I can do it. I can. I hope so. Coming up. That's awesome! <laughs> the biggest transformation in the history of Hotel Hell. <laughs> and a shocking twist. Where's all my shit? 
It's been a tough week at Maison de Messia, but I believe Callie is finally committed to putting her guests first. I can do it. I can. So, overnight, my design team have pulled off an incredible transformation, which I can't wait to share with Callie and her staff. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes. Please turn around. Oh, wow. A stunning yeah. sign. Wow. Wow. Now, when you drive by, it tells you... What we are. The San de Messia Hotel and Restaurant. Gorgeous, right? Very. Beautiful. Now, everybody that goes by is not going to wonder, huh, wonder whose nice house that is. Are you ready to see inside? Oh, we are. Right. <laughs> because this, you're going to absolutely love. Morning, everybody. Look how beautiful. How are we? Oh, oh wait, cool. Welcome to your new hotel breakfast buffet. Wow. Remember what breakfast used to be like? We had cold coffee. Now you have a very traditional, stunning breakfast buffet. That will be served in crisp white linens, not those horrible plastic cloths. And that's not all. I reached out and got an amazing, local, talented breakfast chef. Let me introduce you to him. Meet David, our breakfast chef. Wow, David. <laughs> Hi, David. Hey. Hey, David. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. I, I feel great right now. I'm loving the recipes, and I'm, I'm really excited to be in the kitchen right now. Kelly. Yes, sir. I think that's a much better way of using that stage than a karaoke evening. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Welcome to you, sweet. Beautiful. Very cool. Wow. Get in there. Very cool. Wow. 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 Very, nice. very cool. So we've incorporated some of the local colors and brought them in to this boutique hotel. Kelly, how are you feeling? Amazed. Room 205 is, is an amazing, amazing room. It, it's a New Mexico feel. And I know it's not beige, but you don't mind, do you? No, no, not no. at all. I think it's gorgeous, it I do. Is. The walls are still beautiful, and yet we have all this color, and, and, and it goes so well with the area that we're in. I've added color, but there's something I've taken away. There are no more waivers for your guests to sign. Is that good with you, Kelly? Good. <laughs> It's awesome. The front desk no longer has waivers, and the new rooms are colorful. They fit with exactly where we are in this historic district. I am very proud to show people the new rooms. I've got one very small thing to show you. You ready? Yeah. We are. This you're going to love. Oh, it's out here. Now, that's what I call a pool. Yes, oh, it is. Oh, my God. Remember, there was leaves and crap everywhere. Now, welcome to one of the hippest, one of the coolest pools anywhere in New Mexico. That is the oasis in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Gone is that hideous fence and replaced it with new turf and pool furniture to die for. Beautiful. It is. It is. People will just want to come and hang out here now, man. Bam, this is awesome. The pool, absolutely beautiful. Never seen anything like it. If we don't have pool parties now, then something's wrong. This is your fantastic cabana area. Gone is the stage. If you want to sing, Kelly, do it in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a margarita, Carlos? <laughs> I'll be serving a lot of drinks out here. Uh, I'm hoping the business is going to absolutely kick off with this wonderful pool. Now that you have a stunning outside area, let me introduce you to your new poolside menu. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Poolside. So you start off with a lovely, refreshing tomato gazpacho, beautifully marinated, seasoned lovely with extra virgin olive oil. Fish tacos as well. Oh, I'm going to eat all that. Yes. <laughs> and delicious fruit kebabs. Oh, this is great. Wonderful fresh fruit, mango, orange, lime, coconut, and seasoned with those wonderful green local chilies. A taste of New Mexico, <laughs> not Tuscany, Kelly. It's outstanding. The tomato gazpacho is, is, is magnificent. I'm very proud to cook this food. It makes sense. And it goes with New Mexico. I think it's excellent. Have a good look at the menu. Get used to it, because we're going to be pushing it big time. <sighs> See you in a minute. This makeover is the biggest I've done in any of the hotels I've visited. There's over $150,000 worth of upgrades, and I've never been happier with the improvements. It's exactly what the guests need. If I was Kelly, I'd be over the moon. Green chilies, pecans, everything that New Mexico is about, we have it on the menu. We have the guacamole, we have the salsa. What do I do with the five cases of hamburger buns that I just brought in? And, and even more, hey, what, we want to spend an hour putting things away every night and then bring them out every morning. This is what Ramsey gave the hotel. Labor, 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 labor. 
Who do I hire to do that? This is a lot of work. I can't. I can't. I, I love can't you, deal with it. <laughs> you gotta go. Oh my God. There's things that I'm concerned about. The pool is outstanding. It's scary to me because I've got a pretty big job ahead of me now. And the linens, major pain in the ass. So many things that I'm going to have to do that right now, I, you know, I'm really like freaking out over these. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm going to do is raise prices. Callie is a little overwhelmed right now. I do believe she likes the fact that it's more New Mexican. Jesus, God almighty. But Callie's Callie. Where's all my shit? Where's all my shit? What does that mean? <laughs> the, all the other stuff that you took away. Uh, what stuff? Tell me. I don't the, the, oh, oh, the tapestries. Oh, I, I, I know you took down all the grapes. Yes. Which is, it was covering a pretty big hole in that wall. Now, let's show me. Show me what we, what oh, we, whinging, kind of what we whinging about. Oh, is no, that what you're worried about? Is a plastic yeah. bunch of grapes? To hide okay. this where somebody hit it with a table. We can get your grapes back, and you can stick plastic grapes back on the wall. Let me show you something for two seconds. I want to show you something really important. Just have a look at that out there. How beautiful know, is it's that? It's gorgeous. It's exactly yeah. what your guests need and want. Let me show you something. Oh, oh, there it is. I look at that amazing stuff there, and I look at this pile of shit in here, and you're starting to create a fuss, forgetting that this hotel is about the guests, and you start putting the team on edge because you want plastic grapes. Here's what I'm going to do for you. In 15 minutes, I will clear all that furniture, OK? And I'll put it back in my van. And this shit here, I'll put back in there. Let me show you something. Oh, oh, there it is. I look at that amazing stuff there. And I look at this pile of shit in here. And you're starting to create a fuss. Here's what I'm going to do for you. In 15 minutes, I will clear all that furniture, OK? And I'll put it back in my van. And this shit here, I'll put back in there. I am, I am. Ex uh, should we get for you, should, should we get in there and look for your grapes? No, okay. I am more grateful than you can okay. possibly. Well, you have a very bizarre way of showing it. That's all. Thank you, Kelly. Sometimes what I say with the best intentions is taken with the worst. And to be aware of that is very good, because that just means that I'm going to be able to start thinking the thought all the way through before it comes out of my mouth. I'm glad Callie's grateful, but I am worried as soon as I leave, she'll be back to her old ways. Plastic Greg's won't kill her business, but if she carries on singing, that might. You mustn't take this the wrong way, and I hope you don't, but I grew up with a dad that was constantly moving our family in and out of working men's clubs, bars, and singing every fucking weekend. Seeing him ruin his life, trying to be someone he was never going to be. The other night, I watched you move from here to here. I thought, Christ, you shouldn't be doing this in here. I think there's a level of class about you, the way you hold yourself, the way you dress, the way you, you appear. I don't want to see you being laughed at. I, <clears throat> I really don't know how to, to, uh, to react, but obviously, um... Every time you're singing, you're not, not running, running your hotel. I totally agree and with you. Right now. It needs to be run. OK, that makes sense to me. Good. OK. Thank you. I think Kelly's ready for a fresh start. So I invited lots of new guests and a local band for Maison's first ever pool party. Hi. Table four, four, five? No, 15. 15. 15. 15. How are we? Hi. Are you good? Yeah. Having fun? Yeah. Gorgeous place, right? Yeah. Love it. Enjoy. Have fun. The pool party crowd are loving all the changes. The fish tacos are yummy. Awesome. They're loving the food, guys, yes? Keep it going, yes? You know my first job when I was 18? Pot wash, starters, running. But I wasn't running to glamorous pools like you're about to run to. <laughs> and the new guests are loving the colourful rooms. Oh, oh wow. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Oh, look, that's coming. I think this will work. People will like this idea. It's really neat to have something like this in Las Cruces because there's nothing like this. So. We don't have to leave town. We're here. We're Vacation. Here. <laughs>
I think Kelly's heart is in the right place, but she has a lot to learn about running her hotel. I'd like to introduce you to a very special man, Mr. Jeff Mayhem. Nice to meet you. Likewise. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm, I'm wonderful. Now, this man has a wealth of experience, spanning nearly three decades of running some of the most prestigious and luxurious boutique hotels in New Mexico. Jeff's a former innkeeper of the year. He's not just good, he's one of the best. He knows this business inside out. After all, he does something so well that he's innkeeper of the year. I want my guest to get the experience that his guests get. I'm going to leave you two alone to spend some valuable time. OK, all great. Right. We Thank look you. forward to working with it. Thank you. So let's talk. OK. Now, Kelly, clearly, she can't turn back time, but she can insist on this place having a bright future on one condition. She stays off that bloody microphone and makes her guests the stars and not that bloody singing. Can she do it? That's the million dollar question. Coming up, I finally put Kelly's singing career on ice. It's the end of a long week at Maison de Messia. I'm really happy with the changes at the hotel, but it could still all fall apart if, instead of stepping up as general manager, Kelly steps back onto the stage. It's time for me to say goodbye. If you have that little urge that you start getting the tremors and you feel a need for the mic, I want you to run into the freezer. Stay there two seconds. <laughs> I put your microphone in a block of ice. Now, this <laughs> will give you two or three hours to defrost, <laughs> which will give you a chance yes. to understand that the guests are the stars. I understand okay. that. I want you to seize these changes and run this stunning boutique hotel. I will. Thank, Thank you. Me. Thank you. I've found out from Gordon that I don't have a singing career, and that's OK. I, this is my career. If I could turn back time, can't get that bloody song out of my mind. Since my visit, bookings at Maison de Messia have surged. Welcome to Maison de Messia. Two for dinner? Yes. The new guests are enjoying the pool and the new menus. It's delicious. We're impressed. I didn't even know this place was here. And Kelly is learning how to be a proper general manager. I appreciate you coming. You're welcome. Thank you. I really am very grateful. The man knows what he's doing. Thank God for Gordon Ramsay. Tonight on Hotel Hell, Imagine if a teenage boy designed a hotel. It would look like a Ferrari. There's a lot of red. There'd be a chocolate pizza on the menu. Yeah. It's like someone's wiped their ass with my dough. Yeah. And there'd be hot waitresses with super short skirts. Well, this is the Keating Hotel. Looks like a nightclub out there with those ropes. It might seem Ooh. like a teenager's <laughs> dream, but it's actually the twisted vision of a grown man. And for the staff who work here... I'm at the end of my room. I have my days numbered here. It's a living hell. Cross. Call 911 urgently. San Diego, California is one of the top five vacation destinations in the US and is home to the Keating Hotel, which lies in the heart of the city's buzzing gas lamp quarter. Want to say over the desk? This is Christos. How may we be of service? The hotel is the brainchild of local property developer Eddie Kane. Everything about the place is just the way he likes it. The Keating was my vision. I was at the Ferrari dealer looking at cars, and it kind of just hit me. Why not have the Ferrari of hotels? But this 35-room boutique hotel is far from living up to guest expectations. Oh, my gosh. Eddie pitches this as the Ferrari of hotels, but... It feels like a hospital, sterile, almost. This is all style and no substance. I feel like it's a jail. Like, I don't want to take my shoes off, ever. This is uh, not exactly luxury. Eddie hired a sports car design company and sank millions into the interior design, but he spent peanuts on things the hotel really needs. Let's not use this machine for the sheets because it has rust in the back. Making life a misery for his guests and his staff. I have zero resources. Pretty much everything there is to do here, I do it. How glamorous is this? It's a hell operations here, to be honest. Eddie's constantly adding ideas he's seen elsewhere, but that's hurting the hotel 
and the restaurant. I believe our menu is a fucking joke. It's like four pages long, which are all favorites of Eddie's, but we're not feeding a fucking million different Eddie's. We're feeding different people. At the end of the day, I am the owner, right? If there's something I want on the menu, Jeff's gonna do it. Yeah, I think I pissed them off. <laughs> Eddie will come in and say, I want a chicken parm slider on the menu. I had one in New York, and I say yes. I have stopped being proud of my food. The hotel is millions of dollars in debt and struggling to fill the rooms. So I have my work cut out for me if I'm going to get this place back on track. We're losing a lot of money. It's a nightmare. But you should be able to handle that. Eddie knows he's losing money. I just don't think he knows how to fix it. I don't have any hope that things will get better if anything works around here, it's because of pure dumb luck. There it is, the Keating. Wow, it looks nice on the outside. Beautiful. Jesus, is that a dog outside? Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Is that a model dog or is he real? No, she's real. What's her name? Smudge. Smudge. Right. My God, she's ugly. Looks like a nightclub out there with those ropes. How are you? Yeah, uh, hello, how are you? Good to see you. There's a lot of red. Wow. I'm Christos. Christos, nice good to see you. you. Um, what do you do here? Lifestyle concierge down here at the front desk. You're going to be advising me for my life, or are you going to be... You need dinner reservations? So you organize everything? Anything you need. Oh. Now, somebody likes red. Is that smudged and likes red, or...? No, it's both the designer and the owner. Wow, wow, wow. Enjoy your stay. Right, what floor are we on? We're on the second floor. Second floor, please. Perfect. Thank you. Right here, I like to always stop at the car. Each floor is a different model car. Who's obsessed with the supercars? Who is that? The owner. I agree. So right here, this is your room. Wow. Yes. It's so empty. More like a garage in the guest room. And how much is this a night? $759. $759? Wow. That's incredibly expensive. And what's that thing there? That is actually the jacuzzi tub. In the middle of the lounge? It is in the middle of the lounge. Wow. When they designed the rooms, they took away all the interior walls. But without sounding stupid, these are car designers. Correct, they and are car designers. Now they're putting jacuzzis in the middle of suites. Last time I checked, a living room was for sitting in, not taking a bath. <laughs> Jeez, how much do these things cost? The jacuzzi tub itself yeah. is about $20,000. You don't take baths <laughs> in cars. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is crazy. But who wanted? All these specially designed. That is the owner. Areas. That's Eddie. That's Eddie. Yes. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, shit. The sports car inspired furniture looks cheap and isn't even functional. It's different than anything else. Yeah. Um, different from a nice hotel room. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, who on earth would want to sit here and sort of <laughs> watch the television? And watch the television. <laughs> it works though. The sheets. How can they also wrinkle when having you slept in there? Why is that? We do them in house. When you say we, what do you mean? You don't do laundry. Lifestyle means everything. Your mouthwash. <laughs> it's like gas. Socket's all broken and smashed down there. Someone's left their dirty ones there. The plastic plants. That's outrageous. Eight hundred dollars. Oh my gosh. Gordon doesn't like anything about the hotel. Damn it. Anything else? If I have any lifestyle needs, I'll call. Thank you. Of course. So far, I'm not impressed with the Keating's pretentious and uncomfortable design. But maybe it can redeem itself with the one thing every luxury hotel should have. Impeccable room service. I'm starving. Come on, General the desk. This is Christos. How may I be of Hi, service? Hi, Christos. It's Gordon. What's a little bit bizarre for me is that I'm ordering room service at the front desk. Is it, there's no direct line down to the kitchen? There is no direct line down to the kitchen. The communication between departments isn't really there. So we um, take care of everything and make sure it, it happens. Listen, I'm starving. Um, I'll have a tomato soup, please. And then pizza, um, a barbecue chicken. I'm fascinated to see the chicken parmesan sliders. I'll have one of those. So I'll have that as soon as I can. Brilliant. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Hello. Hello, how are, how are you? you? Thank you. My pleasure. Wow. Well, is this how it's normally served? Yes. In a to-go box? Yes. You pay $800 a night to stay here, and you've got to eat your food out of boxes and plastic containers. Are we short of soup? Because it's not even half full. That's how they serve it. That's how they serve it? That, that much? Yes. Wow. It's one cup. It's like a retirement home. Is that luxury, do you think? No, not at all. What would you rather do? 
Sip that out of a cup. Of course. Jeez, we, we, we barely got half a cup. Um, anyway, I'm gonna dig in. If there's anything else I can do for you, just go ahead and let us okay. know, okay? Brilliant. Mm. Darling? I'm sorry. Mm. You can say that now. It's finished. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. A chicken parmesan slider. That's dreadful. Ah, fuck me. Now I know why they got the boxes. It's a takeaway puke box. A pizza, unappetizing in a box, especially when you're spending $800 a night. This place is obsessed with design, but serves room service in plastic containers. No wonder they can't fill the rooms. That is not my idea of luxury, let me tell you. That's embarrassing. Wow. How can this place call itself a luxury hotel? I need to get some answers from Eddie, the Keating's owner and visionary. Hey, how are you? Hey, bro. How are you? Good hey, to see hey. you. This place has been your baby in many ways, and uh, I'm dying to find out the vision, the insight, and to why. Give us a little tour. I bought the building back in 2000. That was around six million. Did you go to hotel school? No. Nope. You've never run a business before? Not a hotel business, no. Wow. Yeah. So it's actually, I had the Ferrari dealer looking at cars and stuff, and it kind of hit me, why not the Ferrari of hotels? I'm more concerned what you were smoking at the time than what you were thinking. Why would you take one of the most high-spec cars anywhere in the world and turn it into a hotel? I don't know where he's coming from, but it does piss me off. I designed the Keating to be the perfect hotel for me, not for him. Where should I start? The floor. It's all scuffed and marked. When you have a resin floor, it needs to be updated. I mean, everything's just marked to hell. It feels cheap. Um, the sheets. You can't call yourself a luxury hotel if you don't have beautifully pressed sheets. OK. What's the idea behind sitting here? So when you have guests, you know, we can sit down and talk. And... No, but where's the sofa? Where's the table? Where's the fun? Do you know what hurt the most? I got soup served in a plastic bowl. But there's a chicken parmesan slider that tasted like it was cooked three days ago. Who in the fuck would put a chicken parmesan slider together? There's things that don't go in sliders. And chicken palm is one of them. That was my idea. But you're laughing as if it's funny. And you think, because you own the place, you can put that in a roll and sell it. I don't know what he's talking about. This place is not bad. So I think Gordon's comments were complete bullshit. You're trying to convince me this is your idea of luxury. I don't know what to say. When was the last time you stayed in the hotel? It's been a while. You cannot stand there and tell me that there's nothing wrong with this place when you don't even stay in it. You bought a building that was your dream. But it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I'm at the Keating Hotel in San Diego, and I've just met Eddie, the owner, who's completely oblivious to the fact that his supercar-inspired hotel is seriously underperforming. You're the owner, and you bought a building that was your dream. But it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I desperately want to help you. Only if you start identifying the problems. OK. Could you uh, send that young lady up to clear that dog shit out of there, please? Jesus. <sighs> Trust me, Eddie is not used to honesty like that. Right now, he looks like a baby that's just had his lollipop stolen. How are you? Who is this guy? First thing he does, he lays right into me. The room service was terrible. Welcome to my world. He opened the bed up, and the sheets were all like wrinkled and... Most hotels have those giant ironing things that the sheets go through there. We don't have that. I tell Eddie the problems that we have. But it may be sometimes you tell people something and it goes one side to another. I was in shock. Maybe Gordon will get him to wake up. I don't even know what to say. That was very embarrassing. After my meeting with Eddie, I'm ready to see how this so-called luxury hotel runs on a normal night. Hi there, how are you guys? Are you a uh, luxury lifestyle concierge? No, I am actually Sandra, I'm the GM of the hotel. And You're the general manager? Yes, oh, we haven't so met. How long have you been here? I've been here for six years. Okay, wow. Well, so you're here from the beginning? Mm -hmm. Wow, 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 wow. I got a lot to tell you. You got a lot to tell me. <laughs> yeah. I bet she does. Because the Keating seems to have more complaints than guests. Our yeah. room is not very clean. There's a hair in the sheets as well. We turned down our bed, mm -hmm. and there's what appears to be a bunch of sand. The sand? What do you think of the red? It's like a brothel. A bro oh. You've been in a brothel? I haven't. 
it's just oh, right. what I've heard. <laughs> okay, wow. I can confirm it is like a ruffle. Is it? Cheese <laughs> <laughs> oh. plate? Let me check on that right now. We've been waiting for 45 minutes. You know, if it's not up in 10 I'm minutes, just sure. cancel it, because we'll go to dinner, okay? Okay. How can they make a guest wait so long for something that's not even cooked? The system for room service here is clearly not working. Taking the orders at the front desk, then pass them to the kitchen is madness. I've never seen anything like this before. Let's go through the kitchen together. OK. Weirdly, the hotel's restaurant, the Merc, is in a separate building around the corner. Can you believe that we're waiting 45 minutes for a cheese board? I can't believe it, Seriously? but I'm not surprised. She looked pretty pissed, huh? She did look pretty pissed. They sounded pissed the three times they called as well. Wow. What is it? Is it cheese board? Yes. Uh, where's the fucking cheese? Is that it? That is it. How much is that? $16.99, I believe. You're kidding me. I can guarantee someone's going to complain about that. Yeah. Hello. How are you, Gordon? Yeah, well, how are you? My name is Aaron, Aaron. the manager. You're the manager. Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you, Gordon. Um, you're the manager of the restaurant? Yes, yeah, sir. That cheese portion there is barely two little slithers of cheese. They waited 45 minutes for it. And it's like no one gives a shit. Oh, I definitely do now that you've told me this is the first time that I've heard of it. Why would they wait 45 minutes for something that's already... Uh, I, I think the process, unfortunately, is a little bit slow here. I think getting up the stairs uh, is a little bit of a challenge. Why don't you take the call in the kitchen? Oh, in the kitchen itself, we can take that call. It's definitely an option, but we've always... Discussed... Would you think that's faster? I think as the hotel takes it, it's just as fast as... So even though the customers are unhappy with the wait that they've had to endure, you don't want to do anything for them? I didn't know how long the customer was waiting until just now. Wow. OK. Manager. Fuck me. Aaron, the restaurant manager, isn't taking any responsibility. If he worked for me, he'd be long gone. How fucking weird. I mean, How'd you rate him out of 10? Can we go into negatives? Aaron is the king of excuses as far as being able to kind of weasel his way out of things, but I'm not in charge of firing him. How are we doing over here, guys? No wonder the hotel is half empty. They can't even get the basics like room service and laundry right. Maybe Sandra, the GM, can tell me what the hell is going on Sandra. here. Right, we're having a chance yes, to uh, catch up. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you. So, all these issues with the laundry, where's the laundry done? Let me show you. Please. Oh, here we are. So this is the laundry room. Wow. Bloody hell, you have got your work cut out. These are domestic. I know. These washing machines are designed for small families, not a 35-bedroom hotel. Wow. No wonder they struggle. Your lifestyle concierge come in here throughout their day to do laundry and attend the front desk and take room service we, orders. We are the... I mean, this is crazy. It is insane. Absolutely it is, it crazy. is insane. I don't know how we do it sometimes. Who presses the sheets? We don't. We don't have equipment. So you don't press them? Yes. Can I show you where we are in the pillowcases? Yeah, so, Absolutely. Oh God, there's somewhere else. You seem to know all these problems, and you're the general manager. But if there's one person who could stop this, it's you. If the owner... Well, yes, I can quit. I can leave to another hotel and go where everything is much better. It is hell to run this place. You're a general manager. Mm -hmm. Yet you're managing nothing. I spoke to the owner. I said, this has to change. What's going on? Gordon is totally right with what he's saying, but is Eddie being so involved in everything? That's the problem. I have conversations with the owner about what works and what doesn't work in the restaurant. No matter how many times I say, you know what, we should not have a book as a menu. Eddie comes up with whatever he wants. But no one's taking responsibility. I pulled back my duvet, and the sheets were shocking. $800 a night to stay in something pretty mediocre. You should be ashamed. I am ashamed. I am ashamed. I've got to get out of here. Let me get down to the restaurant. Jesus. Coming up, I've never seen anything so fucking unappetizing. Things at the Keating go from bad to worse. I wouldn't serve any of our dishes to my dog. You OK? And one of the staff reaches his breaking point. Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Urgently. For a so-called luxury hotel, the Keating has been a major disappointment. <coughs> it's like gas. The owner's misguided vision. You're trying to convince me this is your idea of luxury. It's taken its toll on the staff. It is hell to run this place. Hopefully, the food in the hotel's restaurant is better than it was in my room. How are you doing? Table of one, please. Hi. Right. Ooh. Good evening. Hey. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well. And yourself? Very well, thank you. And oh, sorry, your first name is? The My name is David. David. So, what do you do? I am actually the restaurant manager here. I thought I just met the restaurant manager, the little man. I'm the other restaurant manager. 
And the food, how would you rate the food out of 10? Six. Six. I wouldn't serve any of our dishes to my dog. Chef Brian's kind of given up. So much has been taken out of Brian's hands by Eddie that I don't think that he has the passion and the drive to be that great anymore. Starting off with chicken under a brick, what does that actually mean? It means it's drier than a bone. Amazing. Even the manager thinks the food's terrible here, and he's not embarrassed to tell me. And then the, the cavatappi. Cavatappi? Yeah, here we go. With chicken, uh, sun dried tomatoes, mushrooms. Oh. You like that one? No. Oh, shit, really? Uh, I'm still going to try yeah. it. So for dessert, I'll go for the chocolate pig. Um, it's a 10-inch uh, dessert pizza. Chocolate, strawberries, bacon. How can I resist that? Thank you, Ernst, indeed. Thank you. The table I'm ringing right now, just bring it as it comes, OK? Everything's under fire. Uh, right, what do we have here? This is the brick chicken. $21. $21. Brick chicken. Yeah, it looks like someone's just shat a brick. Dry. Yeah. I mean, really dry. That's actually better than usual. Really? Yeah. Chicken under a brick is where it should have stayed, because it should have never come out of the kitchen. Wow. Pardon my reaching. OK. This is the cavatappi and chicken. OK. Bland. Chicken's dry. Way too much rosemary and just, it's Whoa. shit. At least I've saved room for dessert. What you have here is the chocolate pig. It's white and dark chocolate, strawberries, bacon. It's like we've had a crisis with the toilet paper department. Someone's wiped their ass with my dough. I mean, it's just... I've never seen anything so fucking unappetizing as a dessert in all my life. Absolutely. Bacon and chocolate pizza, O-M-F-G. Yeah, he didn't like any of it. Not one thing. Fuck me. Is the chef uh, off tonight? No, he's in the back. He's in the back. Is Test. he cooking or...? No. So he's here, but he's not cooking. Hmm. I would uh, really like to meet the uh, executive chef. Chef. Brian Rutherford, Gordon Ramsay. Gordon. How are you? Let's go somewhere out the uh, line, shall we? Yeah. I'm lost for words. I just, yeah, I don't know. I didn't know where to start. I, I'm... Why wouldn't you cook for me? Why wouldn't you do that? It's not a question of me not cooking for you. It's do you want to see what we're doing here and improve? It? Because I want this to improve. You've been here for how long? Five years. Five years. But you've been cooking for 30, 30 years? 33 years. 33 years. I didn't see you on the line. I didn't see you taste anything. I didn't see you... I didn't even see you inspire anybody. This position is killing me in my soul. I've just been doing everything that Eddie wanted. We have too large a menu for the amount of business that we do. So if you... I have 120 items on the menu and we do 50 people a night, how much of this am I able to prep on a regular basis to have quality? But you're the executive chef on the menu. Yes, I am. How can you let that food go out with your name above it? Um... You can't just give up and almost, you know, abandon ship before it's sunk. I'm at the end of my rope. You're toast. I'm tired. But you're, you're, you're an experienced guy. Are you okay? Look at me, look at me. Stand Are you okay? Are you on medication? No. Excuse me, can you get me some uh, water, please? Quickly. Can you get me a chair, please? A chair. Jesus Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Jesus. Come here. Jesus Christ. Urgently. What happened? A chef's on the floor. Oh, shit. You okay? Call 911. Jesus Christ. Chef just fell, collapsed. Can I have some water, please? Yeah. And a cold cloth. Absolutely. Urgently. Let's try and stay alert. Look at me, look at me. Brian! Can you get me a chair, please? A chair. Jesus Christ. Call 911, please, quickly. 911. 
Jesus. No. Come here. Jesus Christ. Oh, man, oh, chef's on the floor. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Chef just fell, collapsed. Let's try and stay alert and drink some water. No job is worth this, let me tell you. I was with the gentleman, we were just standing talking, and unfortunately he just collapsed and banged his head on the back here. I am really pissed off at Gordon. He's stressing everybody out. Everyone seems to be at their boiling point. Has he been stressed out for long? I mean, this has put a lot of stress on all of us. And... What, me being here? Yeah. But do not dare fucking go anywhere near that I put him in that ambulance. Got it. Let me tell you something. 150 items on a fucking menu the size of a fucking shoebox can send that man to an early grave, let me tell you. It's like he's a dead man walking. Yeah. And what he tried to tell me in a five-minute conversation is that you've overburdened him because he does whatever you want. You pay his salary, but you're not behind that line. You have no catering experience. You haven't spent a day in a kitchen. I've never seen anything so fragmented. Okay. It's like you're a little magpie, a little spoiled fucking magpie that's going around picking up little bits of glitter and running back and getting your army to expedite it for you. All that matters right now is that that guy wakes up tomorrow feeling better. Enough is enough for one day. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Good night. Thanks. For me, the most important thing is that he's OK. But that guy has the world on his shoulders, and tonight proved that. What a day yesterday. The good news is that Brian's out of hospital. And they said it was dehydration and anxiety. So I'm going to shoot over to his house, keep the cameras outside, and hopefully have a chat with him. How are you, sir? Come on in. I'm so glad to see you. You know that. I'm telling you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling well. <laughs> We've got immense troubles at the hotel. Mm -hmm. You cannot continue driving yourself into the ground like that. Eddie he takes advantage of my good nature. Do you feel well enough to come back to the restaurant today? Yeah. Good. Let's get you back in there. And trust me, this time, it's on your terms, not Eddie's. Definitely. Good to see you. The restaurant is the beating heart of any good hotel, so the Keating has no chance without Chef Brian. Thankfully, just a couple of hours after I saw him, Brian is back at the hotel. After going to the hospital, I believe that Gordon is totally in my corner, saying, get back in there, get it, you, you got this guy. Now it's time to get the whole staff together to figure out how to get this hotel back on track. Thank you all for uh, meeting me. Am I happy to see you or what? How are you feeling, more importantly? I am feeling very good. Brilliant. Welcome back. Thank you. Very yeah. good. Let's get everything out on the table, because life's too short to fester. I'm here to help. And I just want to hear it from you guys. What's wrong with the Keating? The resources. It's the resources. I tell Eddie all the time, Eddie, I can't do my job. Your front reception desk should not be doing laundry, let me tell you that. The big concern I have is the room service. How on earth do we get ourselves in that mess? As a food and beverage manager, yeah, tell me why it's going via the reception. It's determined by, you know, Eddie. Oh my god, don't give me that. You're not the owner of the place. I tell you what I want and you guys need to implement it. Why is the menu so big? Because Eddie comes up with ideas. I, Eddie sees things. Eddie has a lot of friends that come in that would like to see more items on the menu. Yeah. If I go see something I like from somewhere else, I tell you guys to implement it. But you're not a chef. He is. And he needs his identity. And he needs his voice. I do know Brian doesn't like to say no to me. You have a general manager. You have a head chef, executive chef. You have a front desk manager. You shouldn't get involved. And I give them ideas, you know? because I have a vision here and I give them the ideas. No. No. I cannot work with you if you're like this. We have the key players. There's one little problem we have. And unfortunately, it's, it's you at this point. After last night's dramatic turn of events, Look at me. Jesus the staff of the kitchen have finally found the courage to confront Eddie, the owner. Now. There's one question I have to ask. Tell me. 
Who's the most important person at the Keating? Who is it? Eddie Brian. Yeah? The most important person at the Keating. Sandra, who is it? I, I gotta say it's Eddie. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe it would be Eddie. Eddie. Sandra. No. No. The most important person at the Keating is the guest. And I think it's all been forgotten about. And it's more about keeping you, Eddie, happy. We have to focus on the guest. I'm here to put this place right. Understand that. Eddie and Sandra, uh, just come with me. If Eddie won't listen to me, and he won't listen to his staff, maybe he'll listen to the people who could pay the bills around here. Eddie, up until now, this hotel has always been about you, your dream, your vision. Now, it's about the guests. I want you to meet some very important people. I'm just really worried right now. I have no idea what Gordon has in the room. Hello. Hey, How are you? Hi. Nice to see you. Uh, guests that have been staying at the Keating over the last 24 to 48 hours. Oh, no. When I see all those guests there, I want to run away right now. I wanted to give you a unique opportunity to hear some very, and I mean very, valuable feedback. I've also stayed here, um, and I am frustrated, but I'm here to get this place back on the map. Give me a little insight, please. What do you think of this luxury hotel? Madam, what would you? I walked into the room and it smelled horrible. There was no rest in the jacuzzi, no water. Some of the features in the room were just lower quality, like the plastic looked a little bit cheap and old, so it doesn't feel comfortable. Ma'am, okay. please. I just feel like this place was designed kind of form over function. It was just kind of weird. Where is one supposed to sit and eat breakfast? In their room. My husband had to stand up this morning to have his breakfast while I took the only chair and sat at the desk. I'm sorry. Our, our room service was, um, we ordered a couple of the small pizzas and they essentially looked like microwave pizzas. And then the order was wrong, so we called the correct. They eventually you know, brought up what we actually ordered. And then in the morning, they charged us for both. Wow, I'm so sorry. Anybody else? There was some really high-end stuff, and then at the same time, there was just simple amenities that were skipped. Well, are you saying there's better at the same price out there? <laughs> yeah, Eddie, your baby, your vision. Um, on the back of that feedback? No, I appreciate the feedback. I have one question for you all. Who would return here? Let's do a show of hands. Who would come back to the Keating? Wow. Not one person. Gordon's comment about it's not what I want, it's what the guests want. Wow. I'm starting to realize that some of the things he's saying actually are true. I really apologize, and I am looking forward to having you guys in the future. I can tell you will have a different experience. Eddie yeah, and Sandra, you know, I'm not trying to embarrass you. But this is, for me, critical feedback, and it's only going to get better. The feedback from the customers was good. I'm realizing there's more issues than I thought we had, and just being here over the past couple days, I'm seeing what they are. I think we can definitely fix them and streamline them so the place works a lot more efficiently and all the guests are happy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Eddie is starting to see how much things have to change for this place to succeed. But for the hotel to have a fighting chance of turning a profit, I've got to find a way to reignite Chef Brian's love of cooking. Let's show the gang what we can do. Yeah? I don't have much passion here anymore. I'm hoping that, that, that Gordon being here will nurse it back. Um, right, first was the uh, roasted beet and burrata salad. They've just been seasoned with a little touch of salt, pepper, and then finished in a little hazelnut vinaigrette. Scallops. I like serving scallops with a nice sear. So, a touch of salt, pepper, a little bit of vinaigrette. I've just made it sort of citrusy. Good, sorry. Yeah. I love it when you get excited like that. It's, you know, that energy coming back. I absolutely love it. Well, just have a little taste. Mm. Mm. Are you okay, Brian? You, you're killing me. <laughs> there's, there's two things on the plate. Ah, got the, got okay. the scallops. And the onion puree. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm on the line with Gordon, the energy level just pops up, and now I'm, you know, I'm standing a little taller, and it's exciting. Nice, happy, yeah, good. So nice to see you smiling. You know that. Gordon kind of unlocked the chains that I had allowed to be put on. I'm with you, every step of the way. But you need a voice in here, and your voice is on that plate. Let it scream. I love Eddie, but. 
I have to be able to just say, this is not going to work. This is not to the benefit of the hotel, the guests, the restaurant, or anything. Really you can do it, and I know you can do it. I needed this to uh, remember what I used to do and that, that there's no limit to what I can do in the future. Brian and Eddie are both making great strides. And tonight, my design team will move in and try to get this hotel out of the pits. But first, there's something I've just got to try. I've got a 25 grand bath, so I might as well use it. Right, towel, please. It's been a challenging week at the Keating Hotel, a place that was all style and no substance. But its owner, Eddie, has finally turned a corner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Good. Very good. Excellent. It's time to show him and his staff how my design team have transformed the Keating into a place people will actually want to stay. OK, good. Let's be honest, the Keating is a hotel with huge potential, right? Yes. yes. But you need to focus your attention and energy to the guests that are staying here. Yeah? Yes. Come with me. Let me show you the Keating. Let's go. Come in. Welcome. Wow. Come in. Wow. That is great. Oh, my god. It's all opened up. Wow. There's no more dominant red. Read carefully all those wonderful configurations of your hands. Welcome to the Keating. It's just so beautiful. Isn't it? It's, it's just such an emotional experience. You all have a hand in helping the guests feel welcome. It's amazing. You disappointed the red is gone? No. No? No. It's a brand new, warm, inviting entrance to a hotel. It's awesome. Ready to see more? Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Come into my suite. Oh my god! Wow. So much nice. Oh wow. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, <laughs> Wow. I am definitely oh blown away. Wow. Wow. Oh my god. Welcome to what I think is a sophisticated, comfortable, modern suite. Yeah? Let's start off with that jacuzzi. If guess would like to take a bath, pull the curtains. They have a choice. That's how you embody luxury. The sofas. You can sit down. You can watch TV three meters away from the screen. <laughs> Brian, you're going quiet on me again. Jeez. We thought we were sleek and cool. Mm. And now it's beautiful. It feels welcoming. Come through the bedroom, please. I really like the concept of the made over suite. Now it screams the guests. You get stuck in a perspective sometimes. <laughs> And you need to take a step back and have someone, you know, come in and show you. And I think that's what Gordon has done. It's amazing. Now, something really important. I've organized a free trial period from a local linen company. Use it to your advantage. That means the front desk team doesn't need to waste time doing laundry. You've got more time to focus on the guests. The laundry <laughs> I know, right? And Sandra, <laughs> you are a GM. You're not a laundry assistant. The lifestyle concierge. We don't have to worry about laundry. So I am happy. There's more. Let's go. Right, excited? Yes. Come through. We have refreshed the menu, OK? <laughs> oh, my god! Wow. <gasps> Breakfast pizza. I've worked with Chef Brian to devise a short new menu that will play to his strengths. First impressions visually. It's very vibrant. The presentation's amazing. And the good news is, two-thirds of the menu's gone. Chef, what do you think? I think that this allows me to speak to the guest. And Aaron? I want you, as the food and beverage manager, to take responsibility of room service. Own it. And no plastic containers. I think now we have the proper execution, the proper understanding of the menu with limited yeah. smaller items. We definitely can execute it a lot quicker, and now I feel a lot more comfortable. And that, for me, is great news, because it means the front desk is no longer looking after room service or doing laundry. They can Thank concentrate you. on looking after the guests. Yes. There's one more change we need to do. You've been wearing a red chef jacket for far too long. You deserve a white one, let me tell you. Put that on. Thank you. Enjoy it. I certainly and will. I'm feeling great. 
I'm no longer Eddie's chef in the red jacket. I'm the chef of the Merc Bistro in white. It's not Eddie's favorite color, but it is a proper chef's jacket. You perform like one, you deserve it, make it yours. Thank you, Gordon. Well done. This is the kind of energy you want to see every day. So you know what? As long as they're doing their jobs, I have no problem with them saying no to me anymore. Big night tonight, and it's going to be a packed restaurant. You've got to remember, you are all Team Keating. I know you can do it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Guests are arriving for the relaunch of the Keating Hotel. And the first impressions are very positive. This is really nice. You like it? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. At long last, the front desk can focus on welcoming guests. How are you? Welcome. I'm Cindy. Pleasure to meet you. And the hotel's new white lobby is a great improvement. Isn't this all red? And before it looked like a bus station, now it looks like a hotel. It looks mm -hmm. much more inviting. At the restaurant, Aaron is finally stepping up her, right? and taking a new hands-on approach to room service. Go on, go on, come on, quick. And not a plastic container in sight. Mr. Hanks, right? Yeah. Excellent, we got room service right, over here excellent. for you. The simplified menu has brought Brian back to life. I want the most gorgeous plates in the world coming up in this window. That's good news for the diners. So beautiful. It's very tender. It's like, I don't even need this knife. This is a joint where you don't need ketchup, because it's perfectly seasoned. And for the future of Eddie and the Keating Hotel. Keep it going. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, look how tender It's that perfect. Is. If I had one thing to say to Gordon right now, it's just, thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's our last ticket out. I've been really lost here, and you've woken me up. Yes. Great job. New day, new day. And reminded me of who I am. <sighs> this place was all about Eddie's dream of what a hotel should be like. But he forgot the most important person, the guest. I'm just hoping that Eddie can trust his staff and let them work as a team, because this is a place I'd love to come back to. OK. Right, Sandra, you are a great general manager. Don't stop being one, OK? Gordon, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm to proud you. to be the general manager of the Keaton Hotel. Give me a hug. <laughs> Come on. All right, well done. Seriously, you can do the food and beverage. You can handle the room service easily. And my god, I mean, you bounce back from the dead. <laughs> Let me tell you. Literally. Literally. <laughs> literally. Make it yours. Oh, it okay, is mine. well done. And do not change that jacket, OK? White suits you. You know that. <laughs> and let your team run your business, OK? I think this experience with Gordon was life-changing for everyone here. What you did to get the team back together, I mean, I'm telling you, no one could have done. But this place is on the road. And good luck. I can't wait to come back. It's one of those experiences you'll never forget. Good job, guys. Sometimes no. you have to trust. No. 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 no.